Let's find out what happens when the Japanese yen appreciates in value. Now here we have our sources from the U.S., which is a cowboy hat, which is at a cost of, we're going to say, 10 U.S. dollars. And kimonos, if you buy it purchase in Japan, are going to cost 100 Japanese yen. Now and we're going to set the exchange rate so that $100 is equivalent of 100 Japanese yen. So what does that mean? How, what does a cowboy hat cost to people who want, who are from Japan? So if they have to exchange their yen for U.S. dollars, so on the exchange rate of $100 to 100 yen, that means it's the equivalent of 10 yen. And kimonos, it costs a 100, 100 yen in Japan for people in the U.S. to purchase these. They have to exchange their dollars for, at again, 100, 100 to 100, which means 100 yen would be the equivalent of $100. However, the yen appreciates in value. So now, um, 100 yen, instead of it co uh, being exchanged for $100, we're going to make that $200. So you'll have to purchase 100 yen. You'll need $200 to purchase 100 yen. And what does that impact on the cost of cowboy hats for people in Japan? Well, uh, in, to purchase at $10, well, if 100 yen can purchase $200, then 10 yen can purchase $20 for two cowboy hats. In any case, we only want one. So a cowboy hat will cost equivalent of 5 yen. It, cost, it basically um, halved in value. Uh, Kimonos go in the opposite direction. Now, it stays 100 yen in Japan. So, But someone from the U.S. exchanges uh, money for 100 yen. To purchase 100 yen, they're going to need uh, $200. So, they're going to need to exchange $200 for 100 yen. And with that, they're going to get uh, a 100 yen kimono. Now, let's find out what happens. Now, let's, let's, now, what does this do to the economy? So, we come down here and we look. So, here we have is aggregate demand, which is, we're going to say, the GD overall uh, purchasing, which is uh, consumption or purchases, government expenditures, investment in capital, exports from the country, in this case the exports of Japan are going to be kimonos, minus imports. Imports of Japan in this case are going to be cowboy hats. Now what happened to cowboy hats? Well, the, the, yen, the amount of yen for purchasing cowboy hats went from 10 yen to 5 yen. So supply and demand, that meant that the imports of cowboy hats would uh, increase. Now let's look at exports or from Japan for kimono. So well they they were cost one hundred dollars to get the hundred yen, but now they're costing two hundred dollars to get to purchase the same kimono. So again, since the price of the kimono increased as far as the American citizens are concerned, then the uh, supply and demand says that the demand for exports are going to decrease. Now since exports decreased and the negative imports increased, that means overall and everything else stayed the same. Overall, the aggregate demand for the Japanese economy decreased. So let's graph that on the aggregate supply aggregate demand model. Alright, so here we have is the aggregate demand model. So actual GDP. So we're going to say because the aggregate demand decreased, I'm sorry I cut off the uh, imports increased. All right, so the aggregate demand decreased, so we're going to shift aggregate demand to the left. So here we have is the new aggregate demand, ED2. Right. And here is the new price level. So the price level went down, so uh, we actually went into deflation, not inflation, for the Japanese economy. And here we have is the uh, real GDP, 2 right here. Alright, and so we now we have is this gap, which we will usually infer to refer to as a um, uh, deflationary, or so we went into a recessionary gap, and there's the that is what happens to the Japanese economy. Thank you.